Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone for joining us tonight on this rainy day. Uh, very happy to have you all here. We'll get started with a quick welcome. If this is your first time joining us, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate any new faces and having all of the returning faces as well. Uh, if this is your first time joining us for a Zoom meeting, we do ask that you keep your microphones muted unless you're presenting or unless you're asking a question during a question and answer period. That just helps us make sure that everyone who is presenting can be heard. So if you happen to be uh, unmuted during the meeting and I mute you, no offense meant, just wanting to make sure folks can be heard properly. I'll take another quick moment just to welcome Lena, who filled our secretary vacancy last month. Uh, we voted at our membership, or I'm sorry, yes, at our monthly membership meeting. Um, and Lena is now filling the role of secretary through the end of this year. So thank you, Lena, and welcome to the position officially. Okay, I'm going to turn the floor over to Eric, our treasurer. I'll go ahead and pull the treasurer's report up on the screen. And Eric, it's all yours. Thanks, Jess. Um, so we'll start, let's see, what we've got, um, uh, we'll start with the balance sheet. Um, I just lost my screen so I can read along at the same time. Um, well, I'll just use this. Okay, so um, you can see here um, um, that we've got around uh, $2,600 in checking. So um, a little over $20,000 in savings and petty cash remains unchanged. Um, I will just point out that checking is um, uh, quite a bit lower than what we're used to. And um, this month, I did go ahead and uh, transfer $3,000 from savings into checking, but uh, that won't show up until next month's report. The other thing that I would notice uh, that I'd call out to is, um, that we do have um, $2,300, uh, $41.93 in the scholarship fund. We did receive the um, funds disbursement from uh, Facebook that did the um, online scholarship fundraiser that we did um, back earlier this spring. Um, so that check came in. So that's what you're seeing there and the rest of the um, amounts are unchanged. Any questions on the balance sheet? Okay. Um, so then if we move on to the income statement, uh, let me just get my notes pulled up here. There was a couple things I didn't want to call out. Um, let's see. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, we still had um, a little bit of resi residential memberships that came through, no business memberships. Um, we did receive um, five, a little over five dollars from Amazon Smile for um, people who have linked their Amazon um, Smile accounts to Erin Village. And then the biggest um, piece of income um, was the monies that I just mentioned for the scholarship fundraiser, which is uh, sitting in the miscellaneous donation account. Um, and then we did get a little bit of, um, t-shirt money as well, um, for, um, we sold, we sold the t-shirt and then we had some interest, um, on the savings account come in. So that brought our total income to $2,400. Um, we did, um, pay, uh, negotiate a, um, three months of reduced rent with the landlord for the info center because of COVID, so we're not able to use it. So um, you will see that the rent is $300 instead of the normal $500. That will expire in July. We had normal utilities um, for the month and then um, some Facebook promotion um, that we ran for the yard sale back in um, earlier in May. And then um, the biggest um, uh, then expense um, under kind of our other expenses was in technology and we paid for the renewal of our web, um, uh, web builder um, service that we use for the website. So that brought our total expenses to $583 um, for a net income of the month um, for a little over $1,800. Any questions on the income statement? Great, thanks, you. back to you, Jess. 
Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to the zoning item we have on the agenda this evening. If you have not joined us for a zoning topic, um, since we made changes a few months ago to streamline our process, the way this will work is we will have a five minute period where the uh, applicants will present information about the variances that they're requesting. We'll take the next five minutes for folks to ask questions about those variances and the final five minutes for the applicants to respond to those questions. Um, after that, we will all get together and any current members who have uh, who were members and paid dues by May 13th or earlier of this year will be asked to vote on each variance and we will proceed from there. So I'm going to let Lauren Cardoni, our zoning chair, take the floor and introduce the project. Great, thanks Jess. So good evening everyone. We have one uh, zoning variance request that we'll be reviewing this evening and it is for a property at 130 East Mithoff Street. Um, it looks like we have the homeowners, um, Sebastian and Janet Knowles with us this evening, as well as the architect, um, Juliet uh, Bullock. And the proposal is for um, the construction of a carriage house at the rear of the property. Um, but I am going to turn things over probably to Juliet, um, to share a little bit about the site plan and specific zoning items that they're requesting the variances on. Julia, are you able to? Yes, share yes, I'm trying, trying to pull up the site plan now. Can you right. see it? Mm, let me see yet. if, okay, let me try that again. I'm hitting share screen. Oh, share. I have to actually hit the word. How about that? Can you see it now? Yes. There it is. Okay. So um, the proposal is a new carriage house in the back of this property here. It would be at the corner of the North 4th Street and Nursery Lane. Um, it is one of the larger lots and probably one of the larger homes um, in this area. Um, we're proposing right now is a um, basically two-car inside garage and two additional parking spaces beside it. Um, and the proposal is for a new carriage house, for, which for right now would have a, basically a music room for the client on the first floor and an art studio on the second floor. Um, this is adjacent to the um, proposed new development behind us on Nursery Lane, that I think, I believe Lichens Group is doing. And from what I understand, it's now become single family homes. So there would be a series of single family homes built behind where we're proposing the carriage house. Um, so part of the intention of this is actually to give their yard a little more privacy and kind of screen it from that new development behind it. There's also actually an, a, an existing single family home uh, directly east of where we're proposing the carriage house. So I would say certainly precedent along this, um, along nursery, nursery lane now and in the future for single family homes. Um, there are basically four variances that we're requesting. Um, the first variance is pretty typical. It's, uh, it's in an R2F district, you're only permitted to have one single family home and essentially this is con considered two single family homes. Um, the next one is that um, basically the code says that you can only have one single family home on um, a maximum of 6,000 square feet. We actually have 9,100 square feet lot area with two homes on it. So we need a variance for that. Um, we need a rear yard variance because we're only allowed to count the rear yard basically here between the house and the proposed carriage house. And the side yard obstruction is because um, these parking spaces aren't behind the garage, they're beside the garage. So those are the four variances, pretty minor. Um, our actual building cover that we're proposing um, is only 28.5%. Uh, you know, you're, you're permitted to have 50% building cover on a lot. So um, in terms of, you know, it's a fairly lot, large lot with a large lot area. So that's how we're, you know, able to, um, I guess our square footage is actually pretty low. Um, I don't know if I have pictures of the site. I don't know if that would be helpful or if everyone's familiar with it, but let me just go ahead and share the image here. 
So here's their existing garages in poor condition. So either way they need to do something with their existing garage. And we're holding our proposal to this side of the lot to save as many trees as we can. Um, there's the um, existing single family home I was speaking about. And here's that parking lot where I believe, and you guys could speak to that probably by night, where they're proposing to do the new single family homes facing nursery lane. Great, thank you, Juliet. And before we jump over to questions, I did want to mention, I'm sure most people have seen this property before, but I love this home. I love your garden. <laughs> it is one of the most fantastic properties in yeah, our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. This beautiful home. I wanted to throw that in there, but um, I think yes. what we'll do now <laughs> is I will pull up our... Um, I think he's got her hand up. Julia, you'll need to stop sharing, and I'm going to share a Word document on my screen where we will plug in any questions that folks have. Um, so we'll take everyone's questions down all at once so that you can answer them all at once. Um, let's see here. And if you have a question, if you just use the raise hand feature in Zoom, um, I see one hand raised already. That way I'll be able to keep track of who has questions and I'll call on each of you as I see them. So let me just let Lauren get this pulled up quickly before we get started. Okay. So you should be able to see yes. the four requested variances. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay, we have our first question from Vicki Redderer. We need to get you unmuted there, Vicki. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, the Likens, thank you. The Likens company, um, their proposed plans are actually include four homes on the alley, facing the alley, and two homes on the very corner facing forth. So there's going to be a lot of new homes in the area back there. Um, I've, I live a couple houses from this, and it, of uh, all of the variances that have been requested, I think this really leaves a lot of land in comparison to a lot of things that have been approved in the area. So I really don't have any other questions. I'm pretty familiar with what they're wanting to do, but I just did want to mention that in addition to the house next door, there are two or three other houses on the alley in that block, within that block. So it's very common in this area to have houses in the alley. Thanks, Vicki. I don't see any other hands raised. Does anyone have any additional questions uh, about the variances requested? One other thing I should probably mention when we sent out the physical notices um, or delivered the notices to the neighbors, the item number two on the screen was not included yet. Um, mm -hmm. It was submitted after the fact. So for anyone who received a physical notice, um, the item number two highlighted in red was not on the notice information. Thank you, Lauren. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, could you, um, since it's too small on our screen, could you possibly read what's in R ah, or make it bigger? Yeah. <laughs> We're having to allow to. Right. Okay. Thank you. Family homes on a lot size of nine thousand square feet. Right. Allison, I see you have your hand raised. I, I was also just going to make a comment um, about their house and their yard. And uh, Janet is a brilliant artist. If you've never seen her stuff, she's amazing. And um, so and look forward to seeing what they do with their project here. Thanks, Allison. Thank you. 
Okay, and just final call for questions before we move on to, uh, since there's there's nothing else for the applicant to answer at this point, um, final calls for questions before we move forward to a vote. I, sorry, I just wanted to, I did see um, in the preliminary review, there was a question of, of mature trees and a lot of mature trees. And I just did a little bit of math earlier and we're plus five in mature trees in this property. There's a gorgeous weeping cherry right on the corner of 4th and Midhoff that we planted 25 years ago when we first moved in. And if you've ever seen it in its pink glory, people now take Instagram and, and, and prom pictures, engagement, engagement pictures, pictures underneath yeah. it. So our, our, our devotion and dedication to mature trees uh, <laughs> is pretty strong. So we'll, we'll make sure that there's no net loss of trees as a result of it. We are always happy to hear about tree preservation. So we appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Well, great, folks. Um, in that case, I am going to go ahead and move on to the vote portion. Um, I'll just look here, review my membership list against who I see listed. And at the end, of course, I'll double check with everyone to make sure that I haven't missed you. So uh, first and foremost, you have an opportunity if you support some variances but not the other, please let us know that you'd like to vote differently on each item. Otherwise, if you're voting for or against all four items, you can simply let me know that you uh, support or oppose all of them. So we will get started with Allison Wilford. I, I support Rod is here too. Okay. Was that a support Rod? I'm sorry, you broke up. Yes, support. Thank you. <laughs> All right, one moment, everyone. I just need to scroll down here to get Rada in as well. Okay. All right, next on the list we have here, Lauren Cardoni. Approve all. Okay, thank you very much, Lauren. Is Chris with you tonight? No, he's not. Okay. Uh, let's see, Vicki Rederer. Um, I support all, and Kent is here. And I support all. Thank you both. Okay, one moment, let me get those documented quickly. Okay, and Kent. All right, and next we have... Kyle Green. I support all. Thank you, Kyle. Okay. Eric Stegmuller. I support all, all um, variances and Mark's here with me too. Okay, Mark, go ahead. I support all as well. Thank you both. All right. Okay. Lena Grajewski. I support all. Thank you. Kathy Hoyt. Are you with us, Kathy? I support all. Thank you so much. Mike Pykuch. I support all. Thank you very much. All right, let's see here who else we've got. Okay, I'm just double checking our names here. Okay, I don't see any other names in the list. Is there anyone else that believes that they should be voting this evening? Hey, this is Mark. Am I somewhere on there? Oh, is it Mark Huckabee? Yep. I'm sorry, Mark, your name didn't come up. You're just showing up as Zoom user tonight. Yes, you are. Please oh, go ahead. We're sorry. Yes, I'm for everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay. We have a one of us is is a paid up member. Jeanette, is a conflict of interest for her to make a statement? Or oh vote? no, no, you're certainly actually you're you're both allowed to vote uh, because you're both members. Yes, okay. we're we're strongly in favor, and we like Juliet very much. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If you weren't in favor, I'd I'd have some concerns. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, that is uh, resounding in favor, all in support. So that is 14 yeses across the board. Um, no opposed and no abstentions. So thank you so much for being here tonight thank you. to present and share thank with you, us. Everyone. And thank you for your beautiful trees. <laughs> all right. 
So uh, we will share that information with the Area Commission and that will of course move to them for their, their review and vote as well. Okay, we'll move on to our next item here, the Southside Scholarship. Um, we do not have any members of, or actually, Rada, you are here. Can I tap you, Rada, to give us a quick update on the scholarship committee? Oh, shoot. Uh, yes, absolutely. So and sorry. Lauren there as well, in case I mess something up. Lauren wasn't able to make it tonight, um, but if okay. you just want to share whatever you have, that would be sure. wonderful. Sure, sure, um, absolutely. Uh, at our first glance, with the deadline being um, end of, I think April, we recognize not many people have applied for the scholarship. So we made a decision to extend the deadline till the end of March, uh, reach out to the school to make sure people were aware of their options. And um, we now have seven people that applied that we're excited to review. We are in the process of finalizing the rubric that we're gonna be leveraging to review the applications. And we're hoping to meet together the week of June 14th uh, to discuss and hopefully narrow down, we're going for maybe two, uh, two individuals that would receive our scholarships. So that's the plan. What questions do you have? What else would be helpful? Fantastic, thank you. Anybody have any questions for the scholarship committee? Okay, doesn't sound like there's any questions tonight. Awesome. Well, we're just excited and we hope maybe, uh, and I think Lauren might have brought this up to your attention, Jess, that maybe there could be a way that the applicants could join us on one of the Zoom sessions, you know, once they receive it to number one, celebrate them, but to also maybe talk to us about, hey, what are their goals, what are their plans, and how we can support them moving forward. Absolutely. If they are willing to join us, we would yes. love to give them the yes. floor. Yes, it's not. It, yeah, it's absolutely not mandatory. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. We would love that. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rada. I'm, I'm sorry for springing that on you, but it's I appreciate all you. It's all good. Glad to help. All right. Well, Allison, don't mute because Garden Tour is up next, which means the floor is yours. I muted too fast. You did. Yeah. You, were, you were quick there. So... We are still having the garden tour. We are doing a similar tour as to what we did last year. Uh, we currently have very few gardens who are interested in participating. So if you or one of your neighbors has a nice front yard and would like to uh, be on the tour this year, feel free to email garden tour at marionvillage.org or fill out the application online. And we would love to have you. So what we're doing is the front yards only again. And this year we will also do the videos of the backyard and or front yard. So, you know, just trying to play it safe a little bit again. Uh, next year, hopefully we'll be back to normal. Um, I'm going to be going out uh, tomorrow morning to be uh, scouting gardens. So I don't know how far I'll make, make it, but, uh, I'd love your help in um, shooting your neighbors messages about being on the garden tour if they have a really nice front yard. And it doesn't have to be something like crazy, uh, you know, landscaper type. We love all types of gardens and anything that's unique. So don't think you have to have some amazingly crazy garden to be on the tour. It's really right now, with, especially with front yards only, it's really just encouraging our neighbors to get out look at the gardens, walk around the neighborhood, drive around the neighborhood and meet people. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, Jess. Allison, do you still plan to do uh, video tours of backyards for those who have backyards to share? Yes, so we okay. will do the video um, tour of the backyards. Yes. Okay, okay. And, and, the application and the front. Does, okay, great. And the um, application does give you an opportunity um, to, to let Allison know which one you'd like to participate in, just front, just back, or, or both. So um, yeah. all of that information. And the link, I did just post that to chat. So if you'd Perfect. like to apply, please do. Awesome. Thanks as always. Thanks so much. Okay, we will move on to uh, some information about our 2021 summer fun days. Um, Mike, since you're the only other committee member who's at our, been on our last meetings, I'm gonna tap you a bit to, to help on this. Um, but we have decided to go forward with a series of small events throughout the summer this year, instead of one large festival in September, um, just because things are still a bit uncertain. And the city was not currently, was not issuing permits for events um, when we started planning a, a few weeks ago. Um, 
Um, so even if they had given us a permit, there may have been some extra requirements for sanitizing stations, tracking who attended the festival, for potential contact tracing. And if you've ever attended the festival, um, you know that that would be to put it lightly, uh, quite a challenge. So um, we've come up with some different ideas. Mike, do you wanna jump in or, and share any of the things we've been talking about? Yeah, and I, I apologize ahead of time. Uh, Lauren and I missed the last meeting. Uh, my sister had our first nephew, so we we're excited to meet him. Um, but based on our last meeting, we're going to continue the super popular yoga in the park on Saturdays. So, um, I, we had a ton of attendance last year, and I know some of that was probably COVID related, but I know personally we had friends come from all around the city just to come to it, and it's a free event, um, and it's really nice in the park, so I know uh, Tom Les and others are working on getting uh, instructors willing to do that for us. Um, as far as some of the other uh, activities like artwork and stuff, I don't have much to update on that since I did miss the last meeting, so I apologize about that. No, oh, thank you for jumping in. Um, so we, we are working on an opportunity to um, do an art piece in the neighborhood. Not exactly sure what that will look like. We've discussed the possibility of a collaborative piece that's similar to what the Fresh Market did, where we have an artist actually design a mural, paint the outline, and then the community gets to come and participate in helping to add the, um, the predetermined color to that mural. So we've talked about some possibilities there. We are looking for grant opportunities that that would help to support that type of effort. So if you know of anything that does specifically help with um, adding murals in public, in communities, likely on a private building, um, since we would need a private building to host and we have a potential option in the works, um, we'd love to hear, hear from that. If you know artists who are local to the South Side, especially if they're here in Marion Village who might be interested in working with us, we want to start talking to those folks and seeing um, you know, what ideas they might have as we pursue this this part of the the summer fun days um, as Mike mentioned definitely looking toward yoga we already have Amanda Snavely who some of you may know who's here in the neighborhood um, helping with that effort as well and helping to connect us with other yoga instructors we've talked about other classes like hit classes for example um, we would really like to find an opportunity to host at least one children focused event at the park, uh, maybe once per month between July and October. So would love your feedback from, from the community and, and those who have children, what kind of events you might like to bring your kids out to um, at the park. Otherwise, our last area where we're kind of looking to maybe do a little bit of collaboration is with the existing Southside Market that's being held on Saturdays at Wanderlust Studio and Austin and Company. Um, they've already got a really great thing going there and we're trying to determine how we could collaborate with them so that, you know, all of the efforts can can work together and, and support each other. So we should have more information for you certainly uh, by next month, but in between, please do follow us on social media where we will update um, what's coming. And just for uh, dates, I think the preliminary start date would be around July 10th for those um, yoga sessions in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, I think we were thinking around 10 a.m. on Saturdays. Yeah, that's that's what everybody was thinking would be a great time. And that will be the same weekend of the garden tour. So summer fun days will really kick off with that first yoga event and the garden tour and we'll end with our first um, with our autumn yard sale the first Saturday in October. So between kind of beginning of July and beginning of October, we'll have things happening um, at least probably once a week. So Allison, I see your hand up. Yeah, sorry. I just don't want to forget to tell you, and since I've missed the last two uh, Summer Fun Day meetings, uh, one fun thing for kids and adults could be the bug guy. If you've never seen the bug guy, he is amazing, and he brings really cool bugs. He's very engaging, um, very entertaining to watch. Huh. There's a fee for him, but it, I think it'd be worth it. We were thinking about having him come to, the, um, to Walker Park, Cool. Um, but that may be something that, that deserves to be at Moeller Park where it's a little bit bigger. Awesome idea. Thank you so much. I think that that is kind of cool because, yeah, kids and adults alike, at least if you're not an adult who's terrified of bugs like I am, uh, you would probably very much be into that. So awesome. Thank you so much, Allison. Allison, okay. is that bug man? Does that sound right? 
Allison, you're still muted if you were trying to respond. Sorry, I walked away for a second. <laughs> I think it's bug guy, but I will confirm. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thanks so much. So if any of you have anything you'd really like to see in the neighborhood this summer, you know, small pop-up events that we can keep uh, social distance in place and make sure folks are safe, we'd really love your feedback. Um, you can reach out to any of us, just mva at marionvillage.org. We'll get that to the right place. Um, our festival committee we're still calling it festival committee, but summer fun days, they work in, in tandem. Uh, we are meeting every two weeks. So um, lots of ideas to, to go around and we'd love to hear what folks are interested in attending. All right, moving on here, we'll do committee updates. Um, we don't have Christian from the beautification committee here this evening, but I know that they did hold their first meeting. They're certainly looking for more volunteers. So if you're interested in uh, helping with some projects, they're talking about, you know, new planters for the neighborhood. They've talked about the possibility of um, projects that might allow us to increase trees in the area. So if you've got an interest in beautification, um, email beautification at marionvillage.org. They'd love to have you join the committee as they really ramp up for their next project. Um, I will just touch on membership. So our new secretary and board member, Lena, is very interested in outreach in the community and membership. So she's going to kind of help reinvigorate our membership committee and come up with some really great ideas of how to engage folks in the neighborhood who may not know about Marion Village or may not know enough that they want to be involved. So um, Lena, I won't put you on the spot for sharing anything tonight, but um, look forward put to- Put her on the updates. spot. Put her that's on just, the that's spot. That's just so mean. <laughs> she's taking her first meeting notes, Allison. I got to give her a break. <laughs> all right. All right. Welcome, though. I, I will tell you, sorry to interrupt, but I was just telling Rada how excited I was that now we finally have a secretary. So awesome. Thanks for stepping up, Lena. <laughs> If you don't know, uh, folks who are here, Allison uh, was on the board previously as well. She served as treasurer and as president. So Allison knows how big of a deal it is when we have a vacancy and she can truly appreciate how amazing it is that Lena is with us now. So. Um, so yes, Lena, we will look for some updates from you next month or in the future. She's already got great ideas. So if you have an interest in outreach as well, if you'd like to be involved in that, let us know. I'm sure Lena would be happy to have you to chat with her. Mike, would you like to share anything about social? Yeah, it's kind of more of a feeler out to the group. So, um, you know, we've suspended the happy hours. We had a monthly happy hour going, you know, a year and a half ago or so. And, um, you know, now today, actually, the Ohio State COVID orders were lifted. So um, I kind of wanted to throw a feeler out to the group on any suggestions if we should start up again? And if so, what that would look like? Um, I think the standing around a crowded bar might not be sitting well with quite everyone yet. Um, yeah, I, I know personally, I like, I've enjoyed going back to restaurants, being all vaccinated now. So I'm excited to get back out there, but um, if anyone has any suggestions or comments, you know, let me know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested, Mike. Um, anything that where we may be like, again, using Muller Park, we did the coffee meetup. Maybe we just, everybody bring a camping chair and your favorite bevy and we could just sit around in a circle at the park, you know, or anything just start seeing people again, I think will be exciting. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Obviously, um, you know, it's a park, so we'll, we'll keep it on the uh, a low level meet up there. Um, I think that wouldn't be a bad I idea. I just said bevy. You could bring orange juice if you want. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think logistically how it would work at a res restaurant at the moment. And I think, you know, crowding around tables would be a little more complicated since most restaurants are kind of doing a hybrid approach still. Um, I know in the past, we just don't ever know how many people are going to show up. So it's hard to say, hey, block a table of 20 for us and then you know, five people happen to show up that week because the weather's bad or something. So um, that's a great idea, Eric. Allison, I see you had your hand raised. I, I do. I do. And sorry, Eric, I didn't listen to your um, suggestion. So I'm sorry if I'm repeating something. But um, with story time, like what we're trying to do is keep it very simple. So there's little to no work. Um, but what a fun thing that, you know, like we could always go out to Walker Park and meet there. Everybody bring their own chair bring your own snack. We could bring music or something like that. And we could, we could bring our own um, beverages, you know, something just very simple. 
And I will tell you, like, even these parents, like, who've been coming out pretty much every story time, they are like, thank you so much. This is amazing. And it's 30 minutes, right? But our neighbors, especially those with children, need something right now other than, you know, staying at home or going to a busy restaurant. So that might be something that we do is meet at Muller Park, meet at Walker Park, meet at, I don't know, somebody has a big backyard, meet somewhere. Everybody bring your own chair, bring your own beverage, bring your own snack. Or one thing that might be fun is like a pizza tour. So like we could have people volunteer to bring like a pizza from a random restaurant and everybody brings a pizza, something like that. Um, but things that don't take a lot of work are what I'm interested in. <laughs> I think we can all appreciate that for sure. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, as a resident lazy person, I'm totally <laughs> on board with that. Um, I really like the pizza idea, and I think we could combine that with, like, Eric, what you were saying, just an easy meetup. Um, I feel like Moeller Park is nice because it's central and it's big enough for people to stretch out. Um, I certainly wouldn't mind doing a Walker Park meetup too. Just, I think a lot of people probably don't, drive by it very often. So it'd be good to get it on the map for some people. Um, no, it's a great idea. And I, I think we could even probably ask people to make, maybe bring outdoor games like cornhole or, you know, any other, other things like that. So that's a great giant idea. Jenga. Giant Jenga. Oh yeah. I have cornhole and giant Jenga. <laughs> Ooh, a Jenga. We're in good shape. Maybe I'll get like a giant dice game. <laughs> I saw one that's a giant Connect Four. Oh, that's cool. Oh wow! I'll let you buy that, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it yet, but I'll put it on the list. So, so with that, you know, on the happy hours, um, I man, if I think if I'm remembering correctly, I think we did them on Tuesdays, once a month. Is a weekday a good a time for that? You know, it's, this doesn't have to be a, a rager or anything. <laughs> Eat up for an hour. You know, I think a weeknight's nice because you're not interfering with people's social calendars as much. Okay. Yeah, and weekends in the summer. Yeah. Now that summer's ramping up, I think what about are Thursday? Be swamped. I like Thursdays. Thursdays are usually easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> Allison it, would like to come. Is there any other like city meetings we should try to avoid that's on a Thursday? I know a lot of people here in multiple committees and. I can't think of anything on Thursday. I know that the area commission does meet on Tuesdays. Um, Wednesdays, I think, are pretty much a wash because Marion Village Association has meetings at this point for various committees on like every Wednesday of the month. Um, I'm not currently aware of anything on a Thursday. There may be a small subcommittee, but I, I don't think that there's anything on Thursdays on the large scale right now. Well, um, I like the roll off the tongue of like a third Thursday of the month. So That's great. How about we just plan on something for the 17th and we'll give it a try. So that's a little over two weeks from now. Awesome. All right. I'll, um, I'll talk with Lauren since she's got the keys to the social media. We can see if we can throw something together for that. Very cool. Thanks for the uh, input guys. Thank you so much. And anyone else, if you have any other ideas, feel free to just to reach out to anyone on the committee here or hit me up through Facebook or however you want to reach me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Looking forward to getting people some, some social opportunities. I know folks are excited. So thank you again for planning everything. Mike is currently a committee of one. So uh, we, we really appreciate you taking on those efforts. Even if it's not a big planning, it still takes planning. So thank you. Uh, zoning, I'll just check. Lauren, is there anything else you wanted to touch on for zoning or uh, was tonight's presentation all we had? I think that's that. Did we already cover the update to the zoning procedures as far as like demolitions go? Yes, I think we did that two months ago when we didn't have uh, an item on the docket. So if anybody's curious, we do have an updated um, zoning procedures. It just kind of outlines what the MVA does for different zoning applications. You can get that on our website at any time. Um, and it just walks through what the what the process looks like if you're unfamiliar. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, are there any commissioners here tonight? I'm looking at names. I don't think so. So we won't have any area commission updates tonight. Okay, well, we'll see them next month. 
Uh, otherwise, I did upload a copy of the agenda. Just a reminder, some events that are coming up. There is the Southside Market, which is every Saturday, May through August 28th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's at both Wonderlust Studio and at Austin and Company. Um, I've heard really good things. I've not gotten to go yet myself, but looking forward to checking that out. There's food trucks, art, music, local vendors who uh, and makers. So a lot of cool stuff to check out on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, story time at Walker Park. So Allison uh, is hosting story time at Walker Park. It's that outdoor event that she mentioned. It's just 30 minutes. Those are on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. They are every other Monday. So the next one is this coming Monday, June 6th, um, again at the park, and then every Monday thereafter. And Allison, I'm sorry, what's the last date? Is it August? I don't know off the top of my head, but I think okay. it's October 25th. Oh, okay. Okay, great. So I'll just continue to put those on. Okay, great. Perfect. I'll just continue to put those, um, the, the most current upcoming on the agenda, just to remind folks. Um, but if you have little ones or if your neighbors have little ones, please send them to story time because it's pretty awesome and exciting and we, we love seeing people get an opportunity to get out. Uh, the Area Commission is holding their monthly meeting virtually um, on Tuesday, June 22nd from 6.30 to around 8. I have heard that the city's instructed Area Commissions to begin meeting in person again. I don't know what that looks like since the library does have limited space, um, but if you are someone who attends those meetings, they should be providing updates, I think, on their Facebook page and their updated website um, to give information about how you can participate if they're no longer virtual. So. Otherwise, I'll open the floor. Does anyone have questions, comments, or community interests they'd like to share before we adjourn? Okay. Well, um, that, oh, go ahead, Vicki. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, did you do an update on the block watch? I didn't. Dee didn't send me anything for this month. She said she would probably be sending something every other month. Um, if you have something you'd like to share, please feel free. Yeah, I have a small update. Sorry, I was a little late getting on. I no problem. Get my computer functioning right. Um, um, basically, the um, Franklin County Municipal Court cleanup, um, this month they cleaned between Morrow and Woodrow and Morrow and Hinman, Hinman from South High to Parsons Avenue, and they did it on May 22nd. They were able to pick up 18 bags of trash, two tires, they didn't find any needles, um, they consolidated bulk items and notified uh, refuse uh, that the bulk items needed to be picked up at multiple sites. And in one linear mile, they cleaned up 4,440 4, pounds of trash. So that was, uh, so if anybody has any suggestions, you know, for next month's area, just send an email to Block Watch. Um, the, um, the Connective Tech Block Watch has decided that they, where the National Night Out had been canceled and just now opened back up. They've decided they're not going to participate this year because they requested a lot of funding and, and funds last year um, from uh, community members and businesses um, to provide a lot of events. And they're hesitant to ask the community for, for that this year with COVID and expenses for people. But we're hoping to get back on track next year and to get a big event planned for it again. Um, Safe Streets, uh, which was in Precinct 13 last year, um, they have a different focus this year. Um, it's going to be activated citywide this summer, and they're going to be more present in the areas that are experiencing the greatest violence. So it's expected that they'll, they will spend a lot of time on the streets near the Reeb, Reeb Center and then also further east. So um, they're with more crime and fewer offers officers out on the streets. Uh, many of the property crime reports are gonna be handled through the department's telephone reporting. So you would just call 614-645-4545. There's also a bill pending um, with fireworks that, they, <clears throat> that there wouldn't be a ban unless local cities did it. There's two bills that are pending, House Bill 253 and Senate Bill 72 pending in the Ohio legislature that would lift the ban on consumers dis discharging fireworks and the bills would uh, legalize backyard fireworks on private property year round unless local governments pass restrictions. Um, the fireworks department, the fire department is responsible for firework complaints, not the police department. So you can submit any firework complaints to 311 who would then forward them to public safety. Um, 
Officer Scott Peck has volunteered to be the 13th Precinct Community Liaison Officer. His last assignment was in the 7th Precinct. He has extensive experience in the 13th Precinct, having been a patrol officer in that precinct before. And he can be reached at spec at columbuspolice.org. And um, we have been working to create a community garden for students and summer campers at Southwood Elementary School. Um, they've secured um, donations um, for cedar pieces to build four by four beds that are being donated by Fifth Avenue Lumber. And Shriners Ace Hardware on Parsons has donated exterior screws and landscaping. So if anyone has an hour of time and a cordless screwdriver, we would could really use your help Thursday at 5.30 to help build the boxes. So we're trying to support a lot at Southwood School. So, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for all of that, Vicki. Um, before you go anywhere, Vicki, Mark, I see you have your hand raised. Do you have a question for Vicki? Yeah, Vicki, can you tell me a little bit more about the safe streets? Um, I really don't have more to They have officers that are on bicycles that are participating in the safe streets. Okay. Last year, um, I mean, you, you probably will see them out and about, but because of the uh, violent crimes that are occurring, they're going to concentrate them specifically to the areas where the violent crimes are occurring is maybe covering the whole 13th precinct or the whole 11th precinct. So that's that really helps. all the, that's all the information I have on it right now. They're really trying to focus where uh, a lot of the violent crimes are shootings and gunshots and and that kind of thing is happening now that helps i thought it was the bike officers but i wasn't quite sure thank you oh sorry about that yeah good thank you mm -hmm. allison has her hand raised allison yeah i just have a quick uh, comment on uh block watch stuff so i don't know there was a property i can't think of the address right now mark you might know on on freebus um mm -hmm. that has been what was that I was agreeing, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's been a problem for a really, really, really long time. Okay. Um, it has recently come up for sale. And upon in further, further investigation, when I saw the post on next door, uh, I realized that the agent was actually the owner. So I called him. So a lot of the neighbors made oh. 311 reports. And I called that agent and said, hey, this is not okay in our neighborhood. Our neighbors are not happy. Next day, he got it boarded up. He was like, oh, I didn't know it was a problem. So I don't know that I believe that, but this is the point that I'm trying to make here is see something, say something, right? Absolutely. If we didn't say anything, we didn't call him, you know, it would still be a problem. People were doing drugs, having sex in the garage. So it's just People really important. People who didn't live there. People who didn't live there. Yeah, it was vacant. So they were rehabbing it. So it's just really, really important to make sure that if we see something, you know, we say something and, and whether it's, you know, you know, if it's not a crime and you're not sure what to do, you can always reach out to the board and they will, you know, say, Hey, this sounds like what you should do. But also 311 is a great resource for us. So make sure that you're familiar with that and, and calling stuff in when stuff happens. Yeah. You can also send an email to block watch and, um, they, um, if there's a lot of complaints about and provide specific information about what house and the issues that you're having with and the more that you can document, um, they can help have the person who's in charge of like violations on the house get involved with it and the owners can be fined for violations that are occurring there. So there's a lot of things if there's a house that's a problematic house on your block just notify the block watch and be specific as you can about what's happening with it. And um, D will also reach out to uh, local people that can help with the situation going on. Yeah, and Allison, I'll tell you just for that property because it's behind me, uh, just down the alley, uh, multiple police cars showed up there uh, one day and the next morning when it was boarded. So they did a pretty thorough search around the property. The place is still trashed, uh, but at least it's boarded and nobody can go in the garage. And there's an entire list of activities that we're taking in the garage, but at least that did help. And it was much appreciated. Great, that's awesome.
And it could be yours for the low price of... No, oh, it's, it's in contract. $317,000. Well, that's amazing because it's probably going to fall down within a year and a half. Yeah. It sold for three hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. It is in contract right now for that. For that yep. is the list price. They've taken it down from like a crazy yeah. amount. Yeah, wow. I, can, I can tell what, you. Uh, what's that like address? Four sixty three. Okay, and, thank uh, you. Three forty three. Oh, sorry, got it backwards. Uh, yeah, even the uh, nineteen whatever house straight across from me that hasn't been updated since. 1960 and it's covered in chain smoking for all of those years uh it went for that ballpark of price too so uh they're completely gutting it out and redoing it across the street so it's the yeah. price is still up there yeah it's, it's it's crazy and people are desperate to get in homes so they're doing things that they wouldn't normally do um they're also selling you their homes for 10 20 30 40 50 thousand dollars more than they would have so they've got extra cash to do other things Wow. Um, if, if for some reason, reason uh, they unboard it and the problem comes back, just let someone know and they'll start working on it for you. Yeah. Does the uh, block watch meet uh, monthly or is it actually every other month? Right now we haven't been meeting because the, the police officers um, are just kind of understaffed and we're not able to get together. But as soon as the libraries open back up, we're planning to start meeting again because we have to meet ADA, uh, just some different requirements in the place where we hold our public meetings. So yeah, that sounds good. I would encourage virtual meetings until then. So, but we appreciate the information. That's very nice. Yep. Vicki, I, I plan to. Oh, I'm go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Uh, Dee advised me that the apparently the police mark, um, the police liaisons are unwilling to do virtual meetings because there oh. were issues at the beginning of the pandemic, which Dee said was another reason that the block watch never converted to virtual meetings because the meetings would never have a liaison present, which, you know, would have been kind of a disappointment. So I think that's also a factor in why block watch is not virtually meeting. Okay, now that's a good update. Thank you. Just and a lot of times you have to be careful about what you're saying because um, uh, there's certain things that they can't divulge because they may be working on something in an area. And especially if it was a virtual meeting, the person could call into the meeting that might be the person they were highlighting, you know. Uh, but we will certainly, um, as as Vicky attends or as Dee provides updates, we will certainly continue to provide those at our uh, our monthly meetings as well. So, thank you, Vicky. I appreciate all of that information. Um, I actually have a quick update that is not on the agenda. I, I kind of got it uh, just before the meeting. Um, I'm going to paste this information directly into chat just so folks can see it. But we did receive uh, an email from the the team over at Southwood. Um, as you may remember, we hosted a fundraiser to pull together funds for their recess bags. Um, earlier in the year as kids were heading back to school. And now that school is somehow already wrapping up for the year, uh, Southwood will be hosting a program called Camp Learn A Lot, um, where they will be having camp available at the school for, I believe, first, second, and third grade students, kids going into those grades. Um, and one of the, the things they're including in that is snacks for the kids. So they have a Sign Up Genius link. It's in what I just posted in uh, chat um, for folks who might want to donate snacks to that cause, which I think would be fantastic. You got to keep all those little minds and bodies fed and energized. Um, so they, they are looking for donations and would love folks to um, help with that if possible. Eric, did you want to say something? I saw you pop up. Um, I did just want to, um, so I, first of all, I think it's great to, um, what they're doing and um, any way we can support them. Maybe Mike, if you come to the happy hour, you bring some snacks and then we can like turn around and give those to the, <clears throat> to the school, but also if you haven't walked by the info center, um, Southwood elementary students did send us handmade um, thank you um, letters that they um, did in some marvelous designs and colors and they're, they're fantastic. And so we taped them up um, to the inside of the um, window so you can see them from the outside. So if you haven't strolled by, there's a little mural of, um, I think it's third and fourth grade artwork. Um, it's just 
it's, it's actually really, really, really nice. So um, if you haven't been over Bake Me Happy, swing by the info center and check out the window. It's, it's pretty nice. And that was um, thank you notes, like Jess said, for the fundraiser that we did back for them back in the fall. Fantastic. Well, um, I hope folks can check out their sign up genius link and then um, we'll, we'll double check it as well, but hopefully everyone can get involved. So uh, if there are no other items anyone would like to share. Okay, well, we will go ahead and adjourn here. That was a speedy meeting, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we'll see you again next month, first Wednesday of the month. This July meeting will actually fall after the 4th of July, so we will not have to cancel as we have had to in the past couple of years. So uh, look forward to seeing folks there. And remember to sign up for the garden tour if you'd like to be featured this year, which you know, of course you would because you've been working on your yard for a year probably. And why not share it with the world? So thanks so much, everyone. Uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye, guys. See you, Bye. Guys. See you around the block. <laughs>